Okay, so in this network, we need to troubleshoot a VTP and find out why when VLANs are added to switch one, they're not replicated to the other switches in the topology. We can already see a problem right here. On the output of switch one, we see a DTP or dynamic trunking protocol domain mismatch. We told that the switch is unable to perform trunk negotiation on gigabit 101 because of a VTP domain mismatch. And we're seeing that message multiple times. So on switch one, we have an issue on this port and we already know kind of what the problem is. There's a domain mismatch we told. On switch two, do we see something similar? And the answer is yes, we do. On switch two, we also told that there's a domain mismatch. So on switch two, show VTP. And notice that message is constantly showing up. So show VTP status on switch two shows us that the domain is set to Cisco. What is the domain on switch one? Notice on switch one, we're still getting those messages. Scrolling up, you can see the show VTP status command. And I don't know if you saw that, but the domain was set to CCNA. And here it is again. So the VTP domain on switch one is CCNA, but the VTP domain on switch two is Cisco. So if we want to replicate VLANs or synchronize VLANs between the switches, we need to make sure that they're in the same domain. So looking at both of these switches again, switch one is in this domain. Switch one is configured as a VTP server. That's good. Switch two is configured in this domain, that's a problem. It's also configured as a server. What we might wanna do is set the VTP mode to client. So notice I can set the VTP mode to client now. That's not gonna help us in this example because we still need to configure the domain name properly. Notice however on switch one, the revision number is set to zero. If I do add a VLAN here, so VLAN two, the revision number changes to one, but we still don't see that on switch two. Configuration revision number is zero, and that's because there's a domain mismatch. So conf t, VTP domain, and I'm gonna set it to CCNA. We told that the domain name has been changed. So now, show VTP status. Notice the configuration revision number has increased to one and the domain name is set to CCNA. So in other words, the switch should have learnt about a VLAN two, which it has. It would have learnt about that VLAN from switch one. So on switch one, show VLAN brief. At the moment, we only have VLANs one, two, and the other default VLANs configured on the switch. And that's what we see on switch two. VLAN one and VLAN two are in the VLAN database. But what I'll do on switch one is create a third VLAN, a VLAN three. So show VLAN brief. Notice VLAN three is in the VLAN database and back on switch two, show VLAN brief. We see the VLAN in the VLAN database. So switch two is synchronizing its VLAN database to switch one, so that's good. What about switch three? On switch three, we don't see any messages apart from interfaces coming up. Show VTP status. The VTP domain is blank. That's a problem. And notice the VTP operating mode is transparent. We have two problems here. We need to set the domain correctly and we need to change the mode to client. Show VLAN brief. 
Notice the switch hasn't learnt about VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. If I set the mode to client, are there any changes? So show VTP status. Mode is client. Configuration revision number is zero. Domain is still blank. Now be careful in the real world, switches can learn the VTP domain and automatically join it. Show VTP status on switch one. The configuration revision number is two. We should see that on switch three once the domain is configured. So let's set the VTP domain to CCNA. Show VTP status. Configuration revision number is still zero, even though I've manually configured the domain name. That means that there's another problem. Now think of this. The protocol is called a VLAN trunking protocol. That means that your interfaces need to be configured as trunks to send VTP updates. Notice the command show interface trunk shows us that no trunks are configured on switch three. That's a problem on switch two, show interface trunk. This switch has port gigabit 101 configured for trunking, but not gigabit 102. We'll need to set up this link to use DTP or dynamic trunking protocol and set up one side as desirable to initiate trunking with the other side, or we can set up the trunking manually. So I'll do it manually. Interface gigabit 102, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk. So I've made that a trunk port. Notice the links have gone orange. What's happened on this side? Notice we're getting inconsistent port type. Spanning tree is blocking the port. We are receiving a BPDU on a non-trunk gigabit 101 VLAN. So switch three is complaining about that. So on this side, I'll say switch port trunk. Notice the interface has now come up. So before I do anything, let's do this. Show interface trunk. Has it negotiated? Yes, it has. Notice 82 to 1Q has been negotiated with switch two the mode is set to auto. So this side has become a trunk and notice the link has gone green. So show spanning tree shows us that the port is forwarding. And what you might have noticed there is we are getting spanning tree information for VLAN 1, VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 because the switch has learnt about the VLANs through VTP. So show VTP status. Domain is CCNA. Notice configuration revision number is two. Show VLAN brief. We can see that the switch has learnt the VLANs through VTP. Now it's best practice not to use DTP. So I'm gonna say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk and I'm gonna set the trunking statically on both sides. Have a look at the Cisco best practice documents if you wanna know why I say that trunking should be set manually. It is best practice not to use DTP. But again, show VTP status. We can see that the configuration number is two, domain is CCNA. And if I go back to switch one, let's create another VLAN. So show VLAN brief. We don't have a VLAN 4 configured yet. So VLAN 4, create another VLAN, show VLAN brief. VLAN 4 is in the VLAN database. And switch 3, show VLAN brief. Switch 3, or should I say switch 2 has learnt about VLAN 4. And what about switch 3? Show VLAN brief. Notice the switch has also learnt about VLAN 4. So VTP is working properly between switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. What about switch 4? So here's switch 4. Show VTP status. 
The switch is configured as a server. It's configured in the right domain, but notice the configuration revision number is set to zero. So there's some kind of problem here. Show VLAN brief. Notice the switch hasn't learnt about the other VLANs. It only has the default VLANs in the VLAN database. So on switch one, if I create another VLAN, VLAN five, show VTP status. The configuration revision number is still zero. Show VLAN brief. We still haven't learnt about the VLANs. So let's have a look. Show VTP status. Can you see a problem between uh, these two switches? So there's switch one, and here's switch four. I'll start at the top. This looks the same, this looks the same, this is the same. If you look at all the other output, it looks very similar. The switch hasn't learnt about the VLANs yet, so that's a problem. But notice the following. MD5 digest is different. The, the hexadecimal representation of the password is different. Notice 0x24, 0x25. The last one is 0xf2. The side is 0x3a. So it looks like there's a password problem on the switches. So on switch one, show VTP, and notice we have the option password. No password is configured on switch one. What about switch four? Show VTP password. Notice a password has been configured on switch four. So we either need to configure all the other switches with that password, or remove the VTP password. VTP password has now been removed. Show VTP password, none is configured. Show VTP status. Notice the configuration revision number has gone to four. Show VLAN brief. VLANs two, three, four, and five have been learnt, so that's good. So that looks like it's working now. What I'll do is create another VLAN, let's say VLAN 10 on switch one. Let's verify that all the other switches have learnt about VLAN 10. Switch two has learnt about VLAN 10. Switch three, show VLAN brief, also learnt about VLAN 10. What about switch four? Show VLAN brief. It's also learnt about VLAN 10. So I'm happy with that. I've proven that, that when new VLANs are added to switch one, other switches in the network learn about the new VLANs. So the VLAN databases are synchronized. Last step is to save the configuration of the switches. We have successfully proven that things are working properly. On switch four, you can see that it's negotiated to use trunking with switch one. We could, as an example, manually configure that as a trunk. It's not part of the requirement of this lab. Notice the trunking is static on switch one. On switch four, it's a dynamic. In other words, it's been negotiated. In the exam, read the question properly, do what's required, don't do anything else except what you need to to get the question right. In the real world, you'd want to change this to use static trunking. Okay, so I've completed the lab. How did you do? Were you able to get everything working? Did you solve the problems and get a VTP working?